Welcome to Chat, Communications, Happenings, and Trends, with your host, Amanda Cumming, and producer, Janet Louise Mullen. Thank you for listening. Uh, so the Chicago Tribune released a report yesterday, basically uh, outlining uh, some brain da- that brain damaging lead was found in approximately 70% of homes in Chicago. Now, this was based off of a sample of about 3,000 homes, of which one in, out of every three homes was found to be contaminated with lead because it was a city ordinance before 1986 that these homes use lead pipes for their water. Um, so just to give you some some facts here, the the, uh, F, the US FDA only allows about five parts per billion uh, amounts of lead in any water source, particularly bottled water, whereas the EPA says that what um, 15 parts per billion is an acceptable level for human consumption. Now, just to let you know, researchers on the matter absolutely disagree and basically state that absolutely no parts per billion of lead is acceptable for human consumption. Also, some effects. Now, we don't use lead pi- lead paint anymore because it's a, it's sweet. Children used to eat it. And of course, that was a direct consumption of lead. But the even subtle forms or even uh, consumption over time through water sources or food sources or anything like, like that on developing children has some serious consequences, such as behavioral disorders, uh, low educational attainment. Um, There was a source that was linking like lead uh, consumption to violent behavior as well, or antisocial tendencies. And so you are talking about necessary, uh, I guess the effect on children over time as they develop, uh, their brains are severely impacted because of lead poisoning, which will set them back over time. Now, one thing that we have seen about this kind of lead poisoning story is that it first, I guess, came to the public or national attention because of Flint, Michigan, where it was low income housing that were people that were primarily affected by uh, contaminated lead pipes. Well, lead is always con- uh, contaminated. So lead pipes. <laughs> and uh, so what happened there is it's obviously a still ongoing battle. Um, the pipes have yet to be replaced. So they still have uh, on their tap water sources lead coming through to their homes. Um, the governor just recently announced that he was going to cease the bottled water program that, that, w- that was giving these families water so that they can drink, bathe, anything along those lines without being particularly poisoned by lead. And so what we see is that it's primarily affecting, again, low income families. And so my thoughts on this is that because of how we treat, we have a war on the poor. I mean, that's absolutely, there's no question about that. And it appears that that will continue and any way that they can make that possible to basically argue their case that people who are poor are immoral or anything along those lines they will do that and a great way to do that is to poison them with lead now i don't know if it's intentional but it it sure hell seems intentional now that they know about it and are doing absolutely nothing to help these families even in chicago the homes that are affected by these lead pipes, they basically have a city ordinance saying that the homeowner is responsible for replacing the system, not the city, which is absolutely alarming to me because the city is the one that decides who they use to contract with. The the homes have no, you know, individuals to have no impact on that. You know, people bribe bribe their politician, these corporations, and then they get to put lead pipes in. Ooh. I mean, how recent, uh, Jana, if you can remind me, how recent did they did they do the water system in Flint? And of course, it was contaminated with lead pipes, which was banned in uh, 1986, that practice, right? Yeah, so the Congress, yeah, so the, Congress, the, um, Congress the, um, banned, the, banned the use of lead pipes in 1986. So that's when, you know, uh, any home made after that could not use the lead pipes anymore. Um, in Flint, it was in January that they did the testing and they got, um, that they were in the 90th percentile, um, that they were getting only four parts per billion, um, in, 
you know, most of the houses that they tested and some were still at high levels. Um, you were talking about uh, a court case there, like the court cases um, for the Flint that they're, they're actually preparing right now to do um, a class action suit against the entire state. Um, that was um, a report I saw come out today, actually. Um, and Let me hold on one second. So Flint, Michigan, uh, uh, the problem started when they switched their water supply in 2014. 2014, they banned the use of lead pipes in 1986. Does that not seem intentional? Oh, I mean, I mean, this should have been taken care of. I mean, right then when they were, you know, when they when they came up, I mean, it's been four years, four years. And, and a lot of the time they were doing nothing about it, but bitching back and forth with each other and not taking care of the 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 issue itself and then so finally almost four years later it was in april of 2014 um when they when they first discovered it so lord knows how long prior to that and yeah i mean the the you, you're now you get in chicago and they said out of the the chicago homes um out of two years worth and it was something like 20 almost 2800 housing you know houses that were tested in that two years that 70 percent of them um 70 percent of them were testing positive for lead um I, I, you know out of out of those those two years um so i mean yeah i mean it, it's totally intentional and now you know with them coming back and saying you, you know, you're responsible for the lead pipe that we, you know, we said that had to go into your house up until 1986. So now, you know, you're talking about, you know, poor people. And, we, you know, I watched a video with a woman saying that, you know, she did the water filtration system, you know, and, and that was fine and dandy for her. She could afford it. But a lot of these people are not going to be able to afford a water, water filtration system to help them. Do you are you aware of any programs that are offering water filtration um, for these families at all? Like maybe even uh, I don't know. I heard that companies donate shit, right? Yeah. What about what about companies that specialize in water filtration? Are they not? You know, I thought capitalism was great. And so if if a, if capitalism finds a problem, they try to fix it through capitalism. Seems like these water filtration companies could come in and help, too. Am I am I wrong in thinking this? Oh, I mean, it's, it, they definitely should. And, and I mean, this is going to have to be something that people are going to have to look into. I mean, they're, they're taking the bottle. It's not even the water isn't even really that safe yet they like a lot of the experts in flint were saying okay yeah you were testing this in january but there's still all that contamination you really should you know give it another year um to make sure that it's out before you tell people that it's safe to drink and so you have experts saying this but then the city telling them oh no it, it's totally fine so the you know <laughs> it, it's it's nuts i mean they they um that I, I don't I don't get why they don't they're not doing this or not like helping them get the water filter because there's a there's a war on the poor that's why because they don't want them to survive um, I just saw an, a, some data points today about how on average people in the you know, bottom one percent live ten years less than people in the top one percent. 10 years. Their life expectancy is 10 years shorter than those in the top 1%. That is alarming. That is 10 years off of everybody's life <laughs> that, that you can't get back. And you have a government that's basically operating and running for these corporations and the top 1%. They don't want these, you know, what who they consider dregs on society, right? They don't want them. You know, they're not making money off, not enough money off of them. I mean, yeah, they, they, they're they still charging rent Flint residents for the water, for for poisoned water, which honestly, I would argue is a bait and switch. 
they want they were expecting drinkable water they got something else and i don't see why it can't be a lawsuit ground based off of that alone to be perfectly honest um you were saying that in flint michigan the lawsuit got got thrown out based off of what precedent of other lawsuits being thrown out that's not a fucking legal precedent let's let's just be real there's no legal precedent there they could easily punish punish the people that have done this but of course we don't do that in the united states because the United States is not run for the people. It's run for oligarchs. Yeah, no, and, that, yeah no, so the case and, of Flint was um, the the, um, the a guy that put you know put forth the case. Um, they're going to do a class action, but this this one guy put forth the case. Um, one, once he heard that they were going to stop the water, and this guy he's been living at his mother's house, so that's what they're using against him that he's not going to consume the water. So what does it matter? But he's living in his mother's house probably because his water is contaminated I, I don't know that's what i would think yeah if your house is made un, uninhabitable and unlivable of course you're going to find another source but if you want to go back to the home that you are buying and paid paying for then you should be able to without being fucking poisoned this is just i mean this is just kind of okay so i have been thinking a lot, a lot lately about just a society that fell asleep behind the wheel. Okay. And this has gotten me very angry about generations of, you know, that have come before me because at any point in time, they could have stopped a lot of these things. I think money and politics started coming, like started becoming a thing in during kind of like Reagan era. Right. And that has, that has degraded our entire, our entire political system at this point. Nobody did anything. Nobody, I mean, not enough, right? Not enough said people, not enough people said, wait, 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 this isn't going to be a problem, guys. Then, you know, you have in the 90s the passage of Citizens United, right? Well, that has basically said unlimited amounts of money can go into uh, campaign campaign donations through super PACs, um, which has degraded, I mean, who, who, who people no longer have a representative government it's gone and for anybody to think otherwise it's just foolish if you can't even get if you're a conservative in in tennessee and you can't even get a meeting with your conservative senator or representative that's a problem you can't even if they won't even conduct you know town halls that's a problem but their doors are always open for lobbyists and this is has degraded our system to now we have people being intentionally now poisoned intentional because they know they know the solution they won't act yep. and then it's it intentional and, and 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 so why not argue on that alone like take it you know do the class action lawsuit of course but say you know we need to recoup medical costs because our children are poisoned and based off of all the studies ever conducted on lead, they are going to have neurological impairments for the rest of their fucking lives. Who's going to pay for that? Especially under the healthcare system that we have that is forced upon us by the oligarchs because they get money off of us. So, and, and so this is kind of like going to the bigger narrative here. I'm sorry. Okay. I am ranting and I'm mad because some... Okay, so it's kind of like that kicking the can philosophy down the road, right? Kicking the can down the road. Let's push it on to another generation. Well, now, how many problems are fucking on millennials right now in Generation Z? How many? <laughs> you know, we've got campaign finance reform problems. We've got poisoning problems. We've got war problems. Every problem I can imagine, it has been put onto these generations of people. And no wonder there's so much anger from them. Well, I just want, I wanted to say on the, um, on uh, uh, talking about Chicago and you were talking about the class action suit, um, it, it, they are going to hear the class action suit on, on, uh, I think this Friday, tomorrow, at, uh, for Flint, but with the initial, you know, the initial things that they were saying, um, about this guy, Lord knows how far the class action suit's going to go. If they put this guy saying that, you know, they just kind of tossed it out, um, the, you know, saying, you know, he's putting this case together for 
uh, and he doesn't even live in the house and you know it, it's just it's all these little petty things that they're going to try to get it you know written off but in in chicago so you don't have to wonder we can predict what's going to happen he's going to throw it up <laughs> but in chicago um the a bunch of aldermans got together and and they said they they were at a meeting uh yesterday on wednesday and they said hey look let's you know let's have an open hearing because of all the lead issues let's you know open it up to the public and then you had the one alderman that i guess is really buddy buddy with um ron emmanuel the governor so he um this one guy Pat, patrick o'connor um he he said oh no 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 let's let's sideline that i'll take it on to my committee which is the workforce development committee which i don't know you know i i guess that would have something to do with fixing the pipes but i don't think that's you know where the answer is going to come from from them because they're just going to say oh well it's still you know your fault because it's the pipe going into your house you know what i mean and and so there's i, I don't know I, I i think that's just a uh just something to put it off because they don't they don't want to have the open hearings because they don't want to hear from everyone no and because your government doesn't represent you, it represents the oligarchs and the corporations. It doesn't, that, that's why you don't hold public hearings because you are no longer accountable to the people. It's very easy to do in, in our society, you know? I mean, why bother with it when all you're going to do is, you know, you know, snap in line to what the oligarchs request anyways. So why bother with holding public hearings? I just, it's a sad state of affairs when we have the richest country in the world and we are poisoning our own citizens. When we could easily have the best water systems, we could easily have the best infrastructure, period, but we don't. And it's, it's heartbreaking. And these things like this, Janet, like just tear me down because I'm like, where is the humanity here? You know, why? I mean, yeah, I can, I can see the trajectory of what has happened and how, how it became in this, how we got here, right? But on a moral standpoint, a morality standpoint, I'm like, who, who, are this, who are these monsters? You are just listening to another segment from Actify Chat. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share. Also, we want to continue to bring you more content and need your help, so why not jump on over to our Patreon and support us? The link is www.patreon.com backslash actifychat or can be found in the description below. Thank you so much for listening.